Check out this verbo. Oh, man. Michael, they're your cousins. Oh, my mic is not on, and now it is. What's up, everybody? Um, real quick, if you're in chat right now, if you could do two things for me. One, hit the like button. That helps us out early. But two, let me know if you can hear me. We are, I am running the show completely solo today. Jay and Jared are uh, flying to uh, somewhere in Colorado. So they are not available. Um... So I've got a I gotta wear a lot of hats today. So apologies in advance if there are any hiccups. Um, but so far so good. But this is a different system. This is not the normal system. Uh, Jay's usually running that. Um, so this is the backup system. But uh, I don't know, guys. I kind of prefer this one. I'm not gonna lie. So awesome. You guys can hear me. What's up, everybody? Benjamin Kelly, how's it going? Uh, Brandon, Keith. The uh, I am not wearing a hat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that got me like halfway through saying that sentence. Um, I'm not. That's true. I got my hair cut. So like, here's the thing. I got it cut pretty short for me. And when it's long, like I'm just like I'm running around. We're getting everything ready, right? And my hair's just all over the place. And it's just so much easier to put a hat on. Um. But here you go. Got my hair cut. So now I can just do this really easily and I'm good to go um but uh yeah we'll give it a minute while everybody trickles in I hope you guys liked um that <laughs> I just played some music through YouTube and it played like a VRBO ad um so you guys got some of that um yeah it feels good it feels good uh, having a haircut but you know nothing wrong with with hats I'm a big hat fan although I have like a really weird shaped head um in my opinion and so like I it's like certain hats that I can wear only so I'm pretty picky with them um, I'm not gonna lie I don't know how to pronounce the name of whoever just commented there um, or what you said but I hope it's positive um, anyway while we get a few more people trickling in um, again help us out uh, by hitting that like button that's a huge help for us um, also like if you guys like this if you're one of these people who's here every week like Feel free to share this on the you know wedding groups or or whatever. Um, we always share it in ours. We have uh, some others that we share it with too. But um, awesome. So uh, a couple things. Hey, what's up, Ethan? A couple things. Just kind of getting this out of the way. Those 
who have been part of Wedding Film School Live for, you know, I mean, we probably started doing it a year and a half ago or something like that. And I know that we've been like on a major, major hiatus to, to, uh, or maybe more than a year and a half, but, uh, hiatus for six, seven, eight months. And I know it was first, it was supposed to be three months, whatever. Um, but we're all done, right? Jay and Jared, their, their studio's all done. Um, so this is going to be a weekly thing again. So we're really excited about that. Um, usually Jay and Jared will be here as well. Um, or it won't be at least just me. Uh, but, um, and then, uh, so yeah, so submissions, ah, shoot. I wish I just said somebody, if anybody is in the chat right now and, and can pull up our website, it's just weddingfilm.school. But if you want to, somebody wants to pull that up and just post it or the weddingfilm.school slash reviews or whatever it is, post it in chat. I'll pin it to the top. Um, I just don't have a tab open to do that, but I could do it later if nothing else. But that's where you're gonna submit. So weddingfilm.school, you'll see the little live review uh, button up top. Click that. We ask for a few things that just helps us uh, make the show better as we review it, understand your films a little bit better, um, get your music licensed, all that stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, I guess kind of format wise. So we did change our format up a little bit for the live film reviews. Um, we are, you know, we're not limiting your film reviews to five minutes. You can submit whatever you want, but we're only going to watch five minutes of it. So we're trying to keep this a little more concise, a little more tidy. Um, you know, and I think we can get a pretty good idea of, of comments with five minutes of a film, even if the film is longer. So just know that we're not trying to like jip you. It doesn't mean that we hated your film or anything like that. It just means that, Hey, we want to make sure we can get to as many people as possible. Um, so that is our reason for that. And then as far as critiques or reviews or whatever you want to call it, go um, a couple things on that one on our side, the way we're going to do it, you know, we did used to break it down by category. We found that to be just kind of tough. So what we're going to do is just now it's going to be only me today, but typically we're going to take turns just saying a few things we liked and a few things that we think you could work on. And we understand that you know, we talked about a rating system and stuff like that, but we have people submitting from all over the world, from all over as far as like where they are in their career. And so we don't really feel like a ranking system is what we should be doing. We wanna provide you guys with some encouragement, some things that we love, some things that we wanna keep seeing you do and lean into, and then some things that you can work on that are gonna be kind of those immediate like, man, if you wanna take this film up a notch for your next film, try doing these things. And so that's going to be different for every single person. And that's kind of what we want to cater to. We want to cater to people in, in every walk of their career. And you're going to see that today. We have some awesome films. Um, I mean, we always have awesome films, so that's great from you guys, our community, but you know, if you've been here before, you've seen us review films that are brand new filmmakers, um, all the way through like really seasoned vets that, you know, we actually learned some things from. So, um, so that is that. And uh, as always, guys, we do get a lot of submissions, which we love. Thank you so much. If your film does not get submitted or uh, reviewed in this live stream, um, you know, we do kind of keep our list running, but we do get a lot of submissions each week. So feel free to submit again. And if you want a higher priority, our priority right now, at least as, as it stands, goes to our members, um, which you can join uh, as a member. I think it's like four dollars a month or five dollars a month as the base level so super cheap for you guys and that just gives you priority um we're looking at reworking that member system maybe taking it off youtube we're not really sure um but for now that is still a thing you're not locked into any terms so you can hit that little join button next to subscribe and you can join there um real quick as i catch up with some comments and then we'll get into our first film here Oh, what's up, Bottle Brush? Thanks for stopping by. Oh, Bottle Brush. Okay, if you guys are still here, uh, one of the films today was uh, inspired by you, I believe. Oh, and that's my phone. Um, so their, one of their comments was like, I wanted to do a Bottle Brush edit. And uh, I'm going to break it early. Nobody's on your guys' level. So, uh, you know, there's certainly um, some things that, that I'm sure I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say... Uh, could be worked on but i know that they were inspired by you so if you guys are around uh come hang um ethan what's up yeah submit something i mean we obviously already have ours pulled for today but for next week go ahead uh we always love reviewing your films long hair on a windy wedding day is tough seriously that's like 
that's like my main thing in cutting it short short actually i was just like oh, i can't handle this anymore because i'll like i'll be at like a level right i'm like okay i like the i like the way it's looking one step outside big gust of wind out the door um hello from russia oh dco films uh what's up i think we're reviewing uh, one of your films today uh hello from russia thank you so much um i'm i also think i'm cool so that's good uh bobby in the house oh what's up jared um yeah if you're gonna be in comments you should also uh jared real quick if you could pull our um our uh, link for uh submissions and paste it in the chat that would be awesome um all right let's do it uh yes uh Bar bartos i'm sorry i'm probably butchering your name uh you can send your clips in actually you know what guys give me one second i'm just doing this wedding film dot school i'm gonna just post it for you guys because i'm so nice i'm wearing so many hats today all right got that got this and here you go there's there it is three times and i'll also paste it to the top so that message pinned at the top, guys, that is going to be where you submit your film. So uh, our submissions, you know, from today until next uh, um, Wednesday is where we collect submissions for next week. So we did choose ours today because we do have to figure out the licensing and stuff like that. Um, so we can't, we don't like to uh, just take uh, submissions live, if that makes sense. But go ahead, submit it right there. Um, Ethan, thank you so much for becoming a member. Um, you guys should all be members. Uh, okay, I'm going to just close this door because it's bugging me. I can see it in frame. That would be from my dog walking through the door. All right, so our first wedding today comes from another member, actually. Um, so this is from Laura Harrison with Vision Wave Weddings. Um... And we always like to get a little bit of info, so let me go ahead and grab that. So she said, this is one of, oh, and I'm actually really excited for this one. And also, heads up, guys, I haven't watched any of these, so you get my live reaction. Um, she says, one of her favorite venues, filmed with two Canon C100s uh, and the Sony a7 III, which was her gimbal camera. Uh, one of those weddings where she felt good about it all day. Like when you feel like you're doing a great job all day. Uh, this is one of the first weddings I shot after my private film review. So yeah, so she was a, or maybe still is, I don't know, a top tier member. So we guarantee you a review uh, if you're our top member level status. Um, and then you can opt to do that privately, which I believe I did for her. Um, so that's why I'm really excited for this. Because like we love seeing people take our reviews and like, take that stuff to heart and really put it to use and we get to see that in their next film. So this is one of the first weddings I shot after my private film review. So I took everything you said uh, on board and I think this has ended up being one of my favorite films ever. Don't recall any difficulties. And so there it is guys, like we could probably just wrap the stream up right now. Like that's why we're here, that's why we're doing it. Um, I love hearing that, um, thank you. And I'm super excited to watch this. And her package, so I think hers is a little bit longer. Uh, it's a seven minute highlight or so. They also got a teaser and a, a feature film. Um, and again, we're gonna watch the first five minutes. Sorry, I have so many tabs open. And without further ado, in one second, we are jumping into our first wedding. Marriage is a commitment for life, the best two people can find and bring out in each other. I really like that opening shot, by the way. sharing and growth that no other relationship can equal. Also, I've used this song. It is a physical a and an emotional joining that is promised for a lifetime. Within the circle of its love, marriage encompasses all of life's important relationships. 
A husband and wife are each other's best friend, confidant, lover, teacher, listener and critic. Marriage understands and forgives the mistakes that life is unable to avoid. It encourages and nurtures new life, new experiences and new ways of expressing a couple's love for one another. Marriage is a promise, a potential made in the hearts of two people who love each other and it takes a lifetime to fulfil. When I think of James and Gemma, That's a cool I really am hard pressed to think of two people who are better suited to each other. They both make each other wiser, more patient and strong. Anyone who knows them knows that they care about each other very deeply. <laughs> There's That's a true love there that can withstand any test that comes their way, including the test of time. Not everyone is lucky enough to marry their high school sweethearts. And Nicola, Niall, James is an absolute credit to you both. I'm so happy to see the love that Gemma and James have for each other, and I'm so grateful that I was able to witness my son fall in love and now get married to the woman of his dreams. Gemma Gaffney, we love you and all you do for, to make our son so happy. We welcome you to the Gaffney clan. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, James, do take thee, Gemma, to be my lawful wedded wife, my one true love, the person with who I share my life to be the one who shares my joy and my sadness and who gives me support in all things. James, you bring loyalty and strength into my life. And today, I take you to be my husband and my best friend for all time. It gives me great, great pleasure to announce that you are now husband and wife. <laughs> Every day I count myself incredibly lucky and proud to have you by my side, Gemma, but most of all so today. Where after over 14 years you finally become my wife. And I know a lifetime of happiness awaits us. What I can say about Gemma is that she's been an absolute joy to be around since the day she was born. Nothing has given me more pleasure than watching you grow from an intelligent, beautiful little girl into an even more intelligent and even more beautiful young woman. And Anita and I can't wait to see the exciting future that you and James are going to build together. James is very witty, he's got a dry sense of humour, driven hard working, been nothing but kind and loving to my daughter and it's been wonderful seeing the influence he's had on Gemma's life over the years and of course she on his. We couldn't possibly wish for a more in a husband for Gemma. He's a very caring person, a very thoughtful son. What is really great is he makes me laugh and I consider him not just my son, but my friend. James, we both love you to bits and we couldn't be prouder of the man you've become. You're the best person I know. And reflecting before this speech, I still can't believe I'm lucky enough to be marrying you. Who would have thought that would be the case when we first kissed the game of Spin the Bustle over 15 years ago? Sorry, sorry. Um, cool. Let's go back here. Awesome film. Um, again, 
That was from Laura Harrison of Vision Wave Weddings. Uh, so let me dive in. And also, <laughs> Jared's out of here. They're hopping on their plane. Um, also, guys, uh, a reminder that this is like, I know I'm the one on screen and whatever, but like this is a community thing. Uh, I, and I'm sure everybody who submits, also wants to hear your thoughts. Um, so leave them in the comments or the chat or whatever it's called. Um, okay, so awesome film. I have to admit, I don't quite remember your other film. I know that was a while ago. Um, I think that was right around when we went uh, off of our weekly schedule so that they could uh, redo their studio. Um, but with that said, I think this is a great film. Uh, I'm glad that you're proud of it because I think that you should be. I actually don't even have a lot of stuff. It, it's really small stuff that I would say as far as changes. But first, I want to talk about what I like. Um, I really liked just kind of the look of the film. Uh, I, I wrote down your use of lighting, but um, not necessarily lights that you brought in, but just the way you used, you know, window light, um, the way you used the sun in like the couple's portraits and stuff like that. Like, you know, I don't think it's something where it's like, oh my gosh, look at this amazing, epic, insane shot, but it was like solid through and through. Um, so you can tell that you have a good grasp of of using that, which I liked. Um, I also really liked your use, and I don't know that this is, um, if this is a, something I gave you credit for before or not, but uh, if so, here you go again. Um, you have a really good, you do a really good job with your framing and your use of foreground and depth in a lot of your shots. Like, yeah, there are other shots, right, where your subject is the, the main thing and there's nothing else, but you have a lot of shots where you have something kind of in the bottom, you know, in the corner, or there's just, there's layers to the way that you are framing your subject or your shots or whatnot. Um, and I think that worked really well. There were some really good, I really should not dive into trying to do this, but I'm going to. Um, like this actually doesn't really have, you know, foreground or whatever, but I just like the framing like this. And guys also, uh, I think we, this is a great example of use of foreground. Um, we have some, uh, here's another, oh, nope, that's just white. <laughs> uh, like here, there's some foreground. I think that's a person here. There's, well, this kind of leading line foreground. I don't know if that's a fireplace or something like that, but just a lot. And then I also just love this like shot. I don't know, and I love, uh, it's a gimbal shot and they're in the lower right. Let's see if I can find it. Here's another good use of that foreground. So I think that's a great way to uh, kind of bring your visuals up. There's a lot of great filmmakers in this group um, that do something similar. Um, man, I wish I could find, I just really loved the framing on this one shot, but I don't think I can find it. Uh, I do think I commented on it while it was happening though unless it's right here. Let me check. It's not this one, it's not this one. Although that when is I like a, James and Jim, a lot of movement there. I really am hard pressed works. to think of two people who are better suited to each other. Uh, I can't find it, I'm not gonna look for it. But anyway, uh, so yeah, really good use of, of like your framing and your, uh, your foreground. Um, the other is, uh, I think you did a really good job weaving a story. You used a lot of different audio. You know, there was vows. There was what I'm assuming is a speech from both uh, father of bride and father of the groom. There was um, some of like the ceremony audio or, or whatever you'd call it. Um, and yeah, you, you took the right pieces and you put together a really good story with that. So really good job on that. Um, now on to things that I think could be changed, uh, things that I think could bring you up even another level. Although, yeah, this is great. Uh, this is a very solid film. I know we didn't watch to the very end, but five minutes we watched five and a half actually. Um, and I think this is a solid film. I think that they should love this. Um, I did notice a couple shots where it looks like you stabilized it in post, um, which there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes, and like granted, look, Every, me, probably a bunch of people in this chat, we might see it, right? Your couple's never gonna see it or care. Uh, so keep that in mind in like, I have to come up with things to give you to improve upon. Um, this might not be a huge one, but I did see some kind of that jello effect here and there. 
Um, uh, so there seem the biggest thing I think is there seem to be some audio issues. Um, so there was some audio leveling issues, and guys, the audio is like, um, actually Benjamin Kelly is commenting on this somewhat too. Um, the audio is always hard on YouTube. Like it's even hard. Like I don't want to judge it too harshly because I don't have the file, right? I'm just streaming on YouTube and then it's being restreamed to you guys. So like we've had issues in the past where like things definitely sound worse than what they actually are. But with that said, I saw some audio issues. Um, Benjamin mentioned them being kind of ducked uh, heavily or maybe quickly. Um, I, I think it would just be a leveling issue across the board. They seem to be kind of a variety of levels and part of that might be due to kind of a, a you know sister topic on that is you seem to have the very different um audio like the officiant at the beginning or the pastor or whoever it was sounded really good um the the i know there was the airplane issue that's just it is what it is and if you really wanted to use that you know use it i might have skipped it i don't know depends how i was feeling that day but like the two fathers talking into this mic and then the groom you also had audio of the groom talking they sound very different the groom sounded echoey almost like you had like two audio sources or maybe you were pulling from his lapel mic or i don't know but it sounded different to me um and then the vows audio could definitely have been cleaned up um, there was definitely some hiss or, or static, and that's probably because you had to bump it up so much. I'm assuming you just pulled from the groom's mic, um, but you probably could clean that up with uh, like Isotope RX or even, um, actually I'm seeing now that you talk about the uh, audio or voice isolation or whatever. That tool, I've used it once um, so far, and like, pff, dude, that thing is amazing. Like for, for just like a click it and like figure it out real quick type of thing, it's really awesome. Um, by duck, do you mean fading in and out before and after talking? Yeah, I, I think some of it was gradual and good. Some of it was like maybe a little quick for me, but I think it's also the levels of the actual audio. And then kind of just as you're like, um, as you're like in comparison to like the uh, the music and stuff like that. Um, and, and again, that's kind of a smaller thing. Um, and then if you want to get some really small things, um, when they kissed and were pronounced or whatever, your cheering cut out at the end of the clip. Let's see if I can find it really easily. I probably can't. Uh, oh, I did. Okay, so let's watch this real quick. Husband and wife. <laughs> like right there. That's a great ducking issue. Uh, both in that it was quick to me and also in that... So I would do the exact opposite, right? In that the ao you can see everything and we're back to me uh i would extend that cheering beyond this shot and into the next shot as they're walking down the aisle just just detach that audio and bring it through to the end because what it does is it makes you uh it, to me it just removes me as a viewer where it's like well wait aren't they still here why is nobody cheering all of a sudden so you can it was a quick duck out of audio and it also in my opinion should have been um extended um and actually now i'm seeing that you said you would normally do that so yeah there you go um yeah voice isolation tool is really cool um i'm a big fan uh doo -doo -doo. uh you had one little change in exposure it was of the groom at the ceremony. Um, that's a, a small thing that annoys me. You also had somebody, I think, in your uh, moving around in the corner of one of your shots of the dress, but those are both small. So, yeah, and then the last thing that I would say, the only other thing I would say, and I say this a lot, is I think, you know, obviously you sold them a seven-minute film. It has to be about seven minutes, but this would be a great shorter film. You have a lot of audience shots, right, of guests in attendance, um, which is probably great for them, um, but... You know, I'm not really one to go back in and re-edit weddings, but if you ever need, if you're ever like, man, I really need like just a really solid wedding to highlight on my website or something, um, 
I think you could cut a lot of that out and make a shorter film where like, cause it's like, they really care about seeing all of their guests, but we probably had like 30 shots of just like a person who's, you know, I get it when it's the father or the bride or the mom or whatever, but like, it's just a lot of, of guests. And I'm sure they're all important, not to say they aren't important, but like, um, as a potential client, um, you might not care as much seeing other people. Um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm going to run through some comments real quick, but I hope that was helpful. Um, keep submitting, keep doing your thing. This was a great wedding. Um, definitely better than what you had submitted a long time ago. Uh, what's up, Phil? What's up, Max? Good to see you guys. Um, Max saying the thumbnail for the stream. It looks very familiar. Yeah. I have no idea. Is that your wedding? <laughs> I I didn't make the thumbnail, so I actually made another one and then somebody replaced it. Jay or Jared, they didn't like my thumbnail. So, um, yeah, story elements were pieced together pretty well. Uh, Benjamin thinking that the saturation was a bit unnatural. I actually didn't mind the look of the film, um, but who knows? Uh, warp stabilize. Yeah, so I'm on Final Cut, so ours is uh, just stabilization, so I don't have, I do have numbers, I guess they're not percentages, but uh, yeah, I don't know if, if she's in Premiere or Final Cut, but either way, you know, there's definitely a limit to that stuff. Um, Benjamin Kelly, I usually keep the music at negative 12 to negative 18, voiceovers at negative 12 to negative 6. You can use normalizing to make sure the highs and lows stay between certain levels. Yeah, I'm probably around the same. Sometimes I'll duck my music. I would say I start usually with my music uh, around the negative 18. Um, but I also use music with lyrics, which I find needs to be ducked a little bit more. And I definitely do find myself sometimes ducking it even lower than that. And then, yeah, I'm trying to keep my audio probably, you know, or peaking around negative six. Um, I'm okay with it. You know, again, I guess, yeah, negative 12, negative six. I want it peaking around negative six is what I typically do. Um, and I'm trying to keep it within a few decibels all over. Um, yeah, but I think I think that was solid. Uh, you are very welcome. Yeah, I think audio in a general sense would be kind of your next like, hey, let's really nail this. And like, look, sometimes it doesn't work, right? Because you're working off of a DJ system or you have a plane flying overhead. Like we all understand um, that that's life. Like that's how it works. Uh, <laughs> Max, all right, welcome. Thank you for <laughs> being our thumbnail. I don't know where we pulled that from, uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, and Jay is the audio guy here. Like I do my thing for wedding films guys, but, uh, man, Jay's the one who understands audio. I definitely don't understand it as much as he does. So, all right. I'm talking a lot. Um, as I'm getting the next one ready, I want to hear from you guys. What are you, uh, are you guys filming this weekend? How's wedding season going? Wedding season for me. Uh, I'm a little bit of a break. Um, I have, I have one in July and then I'm like slammed in the fall. So uh, I don't know if that's weird or if that's just becoming the new norm. Like I feel like, I mean, obviously COVID weddings, whatever was different in the last couple of years, but I feel like that's kind of where things were headed, at least where I am, because the summers are so humid. Um, so love to hear where you're at, how many weddings you're shooting this year, stuff like that. Um, and as I get the other one ready here, again, a couple reminders. Uh, first off, Help us out by just leaving a like if you're in the stream right now. We appreciate that. Uh, if you want your film reviewed, you can uh, submit it at the link that is pinned to the top of chat. It's weddingfilm.school slash live review or something like that. But just click the link. It's way easier that way. Um, start submitting now. We will be back next week. And uh, we're doing it weekly. So usually uh, it'll be three of us, myself, Jay, and Jared, who you see across the channel. Um, but Jay and Jared are, uh, leaving. They're on a plane right now on their way for a wedding in, uh, Aspen, Colorado, I believe. Uh, so just me today. And last but not least, if you submitted and we don't review your film today, uh, make sure, uh, you are welcome to submit again, uh, for, you know, next week. And, um, if you want kind of more of a guarantee, um, priority does go to our memberships. You can hit the join button down below. Um, yeah, it looks like you guys, July's pretty empty. 
picking back up in August. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at too. All right, so this next film that we're doing is from Danny Co. Deco Films. I saw you in chat earlier. Um, let's see what he says. Two A7S3s, an A7 4, an A7 3 with underwater housing. I'm excited. Uh, Tamron 70, 17 to 28, 28 to 75, and 70 to 180, and a Sony 24, 55, 85, and 70 to 200, and then the Mavic Air 2S, uh, and some other stuff as well. Um, he says the underwater rig was a disaster. There was a leak in it, which caused saltwater damage. That's a bummer. Hopefully you were able to salvage a shot. Um... And so he traveled for this wedding, and he said he learned that traveling heavy was a big mistake. It was difficult to transport gear within the cobblestone roads and film at the same time. He had overheating issues, and his girlfriend was the assistant, and it was her first time touching a camera, filmed in S-Log3, and uh, did this wedding for free in Puerto Vallarta. They're based in Canada. And it was a five to seven minute highlight. So one of the things that you know I'm going to say if you hear me is that I hope you made this film or if you watch this often. I hope you made this film exactly what you want if you did this for free. Um, I might get into that later. I might not. But if you're doing a film for free, which I think is totally fine assuming you know you're trying to build your portfolio whatever like you can't do them for free for, for free forever um but i uh i hope that you you know you use that to progress your business um sometimes what a couple wants is not what's best for me and my business uh could be a style thing could be a length thing who knows um but uh yeah hopefully you know, I think when you're doing it for free, you should be um, you should be uh, doing it for you in that case. So let's get this pulled up here. I'm going to pause it real quick. Ha ha, I got it. Got it just in time. All right, so that's everything that we have uh, on this. So this is a film from Danny Co. Let me switch back over so I can see the live chat. Ah, so many tabs. So many tabs. All right, I can see. All right, here we go in one second after I make this full screen and make this, this, and here we go, Danny Co. Yeah, those are some sweet shots. I'll take it. I'm going to turn this down a little. At the age of four months, she climbed out of her crib. In fact, athletically, athletically she's the, the son, son my, my dad, dad always wanted. wanted. And she had massive thighs that spread to the side, and she looked like a frilled lizard. <laughs> It looks like you were there for the really weekend. paved the way for Mike. Gave him a much easier go of things. Where I'd uh, get in trouble for staying out late, Mike had uh, much more freedom. Where I'd try to secretly throw parties while my parents were away, my parents would just throw keggers for Mike's birthdays. <laughs> Oh, underwater housing. 
Oh no! Looks like the looks like the footage didn't didn't so, recover. Leading up to this wedding, I I'm very huge in faith. Bill and I connected that. from the day we met, and I kind of was reaching out and being like, "I know you'll be there. Show us a sign." My dad was like, "Look oh, at that one a, hummingbird," what is that even called? and he kind of just lingered around us, and it just Focus. felt extra special knowing that he was around and really in our presence. Finally, Mike. I know he told you many, many times, but Dad was so proud of you. He was so proud of the man you became. I know he's here with us today with a huge beaming smile cheering us on. Now there is no rain, for each of you will be shelter for the other. Now there is no cold, for each of you will be warmth for each other. Now there is no loneliness, awesome for each of you will be companion to the other. Now you are two people, but there is only one life before you. Go now to your dwelling to enter into the days of your life together, and may your days be good and long upon this earth. I'm just so here we check, are, uh, Mexico, Sayulita. I feel so lucky the universe chose you and I as our path through this awesome life. I hope you have tiny butterflies flying like banshees through your stomach as we inch closer to the wedding. <laughs> I can't imagine living my days with anybody else by my side, and I don't even want to. It was always you, and it will forever be you. In a few hours, I get to run down the aisle to you and never let go. Jump in your arms and give you the biggest kiss ever. These last nine years have been the best years of my life. And from the bottom of my heart, I have you to thank for that. Oh, we did get underwater. I promise underwater. to take you where your soul feels its best, living deep in the moment and loving every second of it. I promise that for the rest of our lives, it will be my daily mission to love and cherish you, to be present in each and every loving moment we have with one another. To present to you for the first time ever, Mike and Katie Oldfield. <laughs> I like this Katie's stuff. an artist, an incredible friend, and a savagely dangerous drinking buddy. So with this, I have a little bit of advice to leave you for with Katie. If in doubt, tequila fixes everything. You have been chosen for each other, and remember, the two of you together can conquer the world. have it let me just make sure nothing else plays and we are good oh no sorry my bad um cool uh so uh, let's dive right into it i love seeing a bunch of comments here keep them coming guys um we want to hear your guys thoughts as well i'm not i'm excuse me i'm not the uh you know the only person whose voice matters here so we have some amazing filmmakers in this community um plenty of which are in the stream but i'll talk through my thoughts and i'd love to see your guys thoughts as well and then i'll kind of circle back through the comments after i go through um what i thought so um okay things that i loved about this film um i'm gonna get into there are a few shots that i specifically pointed out that i really liked um I really liked, I'm going to say two things, and one of them is like a big, big thing that I think you did really well. Uh, the first one is you had a lot of great drone shots. Um, you know, beautiful shots, good coverage, and you also had clearly some guts when it comes to drone filming, launching, whatever. I think you were launched off that boat. Um, that is a scary thing to do. I've done it. I know many people who have also done it and have not been able to recover their drone. Um, yeah, it can be 
tough, but I'm assuming you got your drone back and you got some awesome shots because of it. Um, and then the biggest thing that I, th and sorry, one other thing, I think you had, I think you were there probably for the weekend is my guess based on just the variety of, of shots. So I think you had a lot of good coverage of what was happening. Like you had a lot of the in between, right? Them hanging in the pool and like, I think like a welcome dinner and all this stuff uh, in that intro of the dancers and uh, you know, all that. So, um, so I'm going to come back to that as a negative as well, but I do think you got some good coverage there um, of their, you know, weekend is what I'm assuming. Um, and then the biggest thing that I think you did so, so well is you have a very good, like, feel to this film, very good vibe. And some of that has to do with the music choice and the way you utilize that music, the build up throughout the film. Um, and then really the part that you executed the best, in my opinion, is the party stuff, right? This stuff here. Um, actually, should I I'll mute it and I'll play through it. So you have great lighting in this. You have great footage, great energy. Um, so I think you executed this stuff really well. I mean, there's lots going on here that is just playing through. But... Uh, but yeah, you did a really good job with that. Um, the vibe of this, especially this section was so great. And really even, I think it was maybe the section leading up to it too. Um, there was just some really good build up with the, uh, with the audio and whatnot. Now there are, with that said, I think a lot of things that I think you could do better as well. So let's go through them. And this is like, I love seeing a film like this because I think you are so close to like, like I think this is a great film. I'm sure the couple loves it. But you are so close to making something that is very, very good. Something that like, you know, even in the industry, people would be like, whoa, this is like a great, great film, right? Um, and uh, and I think it's some some smaller things, some bigger things, but you can see in the in your edit like you are, that's what you're pushing for and that's what you're trying for and I love that. So first and foremost, pushing for that, going with something more upbeat, out of the box, whatever, like good job. Um, okay, I hate the intro. Hate's a strong word. I don't feel like the intro has a place in this film. It's, it is, let's see, 40, 40 45 seconds long. Um, you don't see the bride or the groom until about the minute mark, and it's the bride working out, I believe, or something like that, around that time. This whole intro is beautiful. I like this shot. Actually, you know what I really like? I like this, this, and maybe that, although, I, who is that guy? Is he a family member? I, I'm guessing not. It's like a really... I like the shot. It's beautiful. But uh, I feel like that's just like somebody who was hired to drive the boat, maybe. Um, in which case, I don't like this shot as much. But those first two shots, I really like. I think that sets, whoa, we are somewhere exotic. This is gorgeous. Oh, we're on this fancy boat. Um, it's a destination wedding. Um, but it's all this stuff that I don't. Well, that one's fine. But all this. All this dancing stuff. And here's why. Yeah, owner of the boat, I would take it out. Um, I don't like... I This doesn't play a role in their film to me, and we don't see them interacting with it at all. If, if it was a show for them and you have reactions and whatever, then I would totally use it. Um, but this is like a standalone... Like, this just looks like a commercial... I mean, it looks like you tried for like a commercial for like the venue of some show they offer. Like, it doesn't tie into the wedding for me at all. Um, and so that's the issue that I have with it. Um, and then I also personally, I'm a fan of seeing like the couple early on, um, which, which we don't. And like, this is all cool stuff. I do think you have a lot of noise in a lot of this footage. My guess is it was underexposed. Um, but you know, so tech from a technical standpoint, some of the footage 
Like, it's cool stuff, but the footage itself is whatever, but then the way it fits in just doesn't make sense to me. And I think this is stuff that could be interspersed later in the film, but, like, you gotta start with, like, you, like this is the sucking people into this film. Why do they want to watch it? And to me, this does not say wedding film at all, and that's the issue. And, okay, yeah, I see. I'm just checking comments real quick, and you're saying it's filmed with iPhone 13, and I think you can tell. Um, and, I, I like, I think this can be weaved into the film. I just don't like it as an intro. You actually really have two intros because then you go to this section here and this is the father of the bride, I'm assuming, and like kind of setting where we are and whatever. Um, this is like kind of its own little intro too. Um, and that's actually one of the things that I, I, I think, I think you fit a lot of content, audio content in um, to this film, which is good it might have even been too much. Like, I want to feel where we are. I want to feel the personalities of the people. And I think that's why I like that party footage. It's just like you kind of get that full vibe. And you get pieces of that here. Um, but uh, it almost felt like little sections. Like, the first 45 seconds is a film. Kind of a commercial, in my opinion. The second you know, maybe 45 seconds, I don't know exactly, is, like, what I would consider an intro to the wedding weekend. And then, like, you had, like, the full... It's a bunch of shots of, like, the ceremony and, uh... Like, these drone shots of the cliff and stuff like that. So, it almost felt like... And it felt with your, your music changes in there, too, but it almost felt like I, I would like to see more flow as, like, a cohesive overall film. And thinking about how these separate parts... Uh, relate to the other parts of the film and how they flow together that's a lot of talking for me so i'm sorry um another thing that i think you could do is i know you mentioned i saw there uh that this is a new lut that you were using or something like that i can't find the comment um i think that you could do more work on your color um i know color is preference right everybody has their own preference uh, drone shots don't really count to me because you're not shooting s log for those um but like a lot of your log footage to me looks like it could use more contrast and maybe saturation still now that could be personal preference um i just think there could be more done to it it looks it still looks um desaturated and low contrast to me um again it's YouTube, so we don't like to go too hard into color, but um, yeah, I think I think I stand by that. Um, and some shots look look good. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I just had it written down, so I'm gonna say what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna play this while we keep talking. Um, I mentioned that you had really good coverage of like the weekend in my opinion like it looks like you were with them the whole weekend you got a lot of where they are and the environment whatever but at the same time i feel like i don't have a lot of shots of like the bride and groom and i don't know if you just didn't if you weren't really given time with them um or what i know there was like the two underwater shots and then one of them standing in the pool there was one really really good drone shot on that rock that i liked and then like this of them jumping in um, but yeah, I feel like we could have used a, a more, it's like you had like good coverage, but there's still like some content that I felt like I was lacking. Also, I love this drone shot that we're seeing right here. Um, and the last two things I'll say, uh, some of the audio felt like it was, it was like battling with the music. Um, so maybe looking into your levels and then, um, there's some focus issues and it's on some main shots. So I'm actually gonna pull this one because we're there. Um, I think you're off out of focus. I think you're focused on that sign, which is, you know, I don't know, a foot behind them, six inches behind them. It could be the cast of that light kind of behind them that's that's making it look just kind of fuzzy. But I also noticed it in some of the other speeches as well. So just be sure that's in focus it was a closer shot of somebody giving a toast just being sure of course that you're in focus um i think like those pulled me out of the story a little bit um i think that you got some like really good 
Actually, I know this shot was out of focus. The groom's reaction as she came down the aisle, wherever that is. Uh, this, your focus is off. So just, you know, in some of those critical moments, like if you're going to show this, I don't know, groom reaction, I don't know. I would run two cameras, though, on toast, especially, where you have a wide one where it's like, it's not going to be out of focus, you know what I mean? Uh, so that if you do find in post that it's out of focus, you can um, you can choose not to use it. Um, other than that, though, man, like I said, I really like to see you kind of pushing boundaries, and I really like that you did this really hype film um, that just had all this buildup that I really loved. I think there are definitely things that I, I would do differently about it, um, and things that you could really improve on. But like, I don't know how many weddings you've filmed. If this is early in your career, like, whew, yeah, you're going to do some awesome stuff. Even if it's not early in your career, I think, like I said, this is just right on the edge of just being this like amazing epic um, film. And hopefully my thoughts help you in doing that for your next one. And I hope you're able to do some more, like, I know this is destination for you. So if that's what you want to do, I hope you're able to uh, do that. Cause I think that would be awesome. Um, let's go through some comments. Um, <laughs> Brandon says he just watched this on Instagram. Uh, yeah, it feels very commercial. I know I mentioned something like that. Okay. So yeah, it does sound like you were there for the whole weekend. Transition from stage performances to the beach day is a bit jarring. Yeah. I think, uh, Max kind of hitting what I was saying where it's just like, it's, it's its own like encapsulated thing. Um, Want to hear those waves, boat engine? Yeah, some sound design. There's uh, definitely some room for sound design. That's a good comment. Um, I didn't really uh, mention any of that, but uh, yeah, beach day shots are legit, a tad desaturated. Song choice legit. That was one of the things that I, I definitely agree with. I think you had some, I, that just played so much role in kind of that vibe of the film. Um, Uh, Danny's saying he thinks he needs to calibrate his screen. That might be true. Who knows? Um, yeah, a tad less narrative to the film to let it breathe. And then some sound design. Um, I think that is a, a good point. I think that might be kind of what I was getting at. Awesome drone shots. Love that. Yeah, I'm reading all the comments about landing on a boat. So we're all in agreement. It sucks. Um... Kind of an abrupt ending. I think that's true. I really like that wide shot with the fireworks. It's really cool. Um, but it does kind of just like end. Um, which maybe is what you're going for. So um, yeah, would have spliced the stage performer stuff into the night party shots. That's kind of where I'm at too. Like I think those have a role because they're interesting and cool. There's a siren going by, sorry. Um, but um, but uh, yeah, I think they could have been included in that like hype footage party footage i think that could have blended really well um 2.5 years in yeah so man that's still really early I, I think this is great i'm glad that you took this film i hope it was what you wanted and uh again i hope this is like if you want to make this film this exact film whatever whatever it is that you want to make make sure you're making that film when you're doing a wedding for free um because that's the whole goal is to get more weddings like that and more weddings like what you want to make um well we've got one more film today let's see um while i'm getting that set up anybody have like questions i don't know or thoughts or just let's hang as a community or uh i don't know live q a open for business um i'm gonna get the other one set up here But uh, yeah, thanks so much for submitting. Reminder, guys, you can submit at the link that is uh, in the chat. And we love to review your films, so please do so. Um, and another reminder, that priority does go to our members. So hit us with a membership if you want to support this channel. Um, Helps us out. Starts at five dollars, uh, but you can still get reviewed even if you're not a member. I think we had one membership that was reviewed today. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna drink some water because this is a lot of talking for me. Um, and other than that, 
Uh, yeah, we'll be live every Thursday. We're trying out this new time at noon. Well, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern. We're really liking it. I hope you guys are liking it as well. Um, evenings are just tough for us, right? Uh, we all have lives as well. We all are running multiple other businesses. Um, so uh, doing these during the day is way better for us. And we feel like it probably is the case for you guys too. Um, you know, you're probably sitting there editing, right? Uh, we're right there with you. So uh, we get to take a little break and hang out as a community. So we're into that. Um, all right, let's go on to our next film. And this one is from Ryan Wijaja. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, the only notes we have, and this is this is why I picked it, so we'll see what it's like. Uh, well, we do have a little bit of notes. Is they ordered a six to eight minute highlight reel. I think this one is. It's eight minutes, so we are going to only watch five minutes of it, FYI. The only notes that we have as far as what gear was used, give us some background, is very bottle brush inspired edit. So, bottle brush, Andrew, Grace, if you guys are still in the chats, uh, I guess that uh, this one's for you. Um, I haven't watched it, so we'll see. Um, and again, guys, uh, you know, I want to hear your comments while we're watching this. I want you guys in chat letting us all know your thoughts as well. Um, you know, I'm not the king of this stream. I guess I'm the one on on screen. But, uh, yeah, we have some awesome filmmakers in chat who all have valid opinions. And uh, it's helpful when you guys share your thoughts too, both good and bad, because... I can't get to everything, and you guys don't want to hear me talk just nonstop. So, um, we're gonna go into this film though. Um, again, this is from Ryan Wijaja from Ryan Films San Diego, and uh, we'll see what he's got. This one's Vimeo, so I just want to make sure it works the same way. Uh, all right, guys, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the newlyweds. First of all, thanks to everybody for coming and all you that I don't know, I'm glad we fed you. But uh, today is one of those epic days in my life. Our baby got hitched. I can't imagine a better choice for her to spend her life with. And Cody, thanks for taking over payments. sitting out here watching them do their wedding vows and be a couple. And I saw Kevin give his daughter away to my son. <laughs> Present this woman to stand beside this man. This guy. All right, you guys. <laughs> and they said their vows, and now they're married, and now I have a daughter. Heart, do you take this beautiful woman as your wife? I do. Uh, wait, there's more. No. <laughs> now, many people don't know this, but when Hannah and I first met, we were not really at all interested in being friends. <laughs> also, I had heard that Hannah was just a little bit of a troublemaker, so I uh, <laughs> opted to keep my distance. <laughs> you got me trancing underneath your spell. And that was so fast forward to uh, freshman year of high school, and what do you know, I'm the new kid. So we instantly recognize each other, and Hannah's friendship really did turn my original scary thought of being the new kid in high school to some of my most cherished memories. Hannah, I want to commend you on how beautiful you look tonight, and Lesards for, for raising such a beautiful young lady. Hannah is 
is truly one of the most caring and genuine people I have ever had the opportunity to meet, and I feel endlessly lucky to have her in my life. And um, speaking of endlessly lucky, I think you got in the bag, Cody. For the Rileys, you guys were basically like my other family. Cody was my first friend. You know, we met at five years old. We did everything together. Baseball, motorcycles, whatever it was. After high school, we kind of went our separate ways, but it didn't matter whether we talked or text or whatever. It always felt like we just picked up, right? Even from 954 miles away, Cody's devotion and love for Hannah was always very evident to me. And um, the comfort that I take in knowing that she's got her side is unexplainable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I first met you, we were about to graduate high school. I can't do this. Yeah, you can. Breathe. It was it's no secret. Me. It was no secret that I instantly fell for you. As time went on and we grew as individuals, we quickly learned that if something is meant to be, it'll always find its way back, and I'm so glad that it did. Hannah, if we could go back 10 years ago and tell our younger selves we'd be exchanging vows on this day, we'd probably nervously giggle and just look at each other not knowing how to react. Well, the day becomes reality, as you know, and occasionally give me a hard time. My memory is not always the best, but yet I don't seem to have that issue when it comes to you. Hannah and Cody, I wish you nothing but the best, and here's to finding your troublemaker, and I, w I can't wait to see all the amazing things that you guys have in store for you. I love you. I wish you guys nothing but happiness and uh, nothing but great things in the future. So let's raise a glass for Cody and Hannah tonight. I hear the voice inside me saying be all you can be. You gotta keep the truth in your heart. Believe when you can't see. You don't see the sign. Give it time. Reach the top. You have been there for me in the hardest times of my life. You have helped to build me to be someone that I'm proud to be today. You ground me and so effortlessly became the best part of me. Because before you, Cody, I was only half as fun, only half as brave, and only half of me. <laughs> With you, I'm whole. I remember being in a hotel at a baseball tournament when you first broke the ice. All right, we're at 530, me. so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause it. Um, I, I honestly, like... Oh, yeah, look at that pause screen. Look at that guy staring into your soul. Um, so I honestly, part of me wants to finish this film just because, like, we basically went from one film to a completely separate film at the four-minute mark. So who knows what's in store? Um, but with that said, I want to be fair to everybody. So uh, we are going to pause it there. I still think I have plenty of stuff um, that I can comment on. Um, and, again, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts as well. What did you love what do you think is actually this is great i want to hear your guys comments what is one thing that you loved just hit like a plus and then write that and then hit a minus and the minus is going to represent in your next or in this guy's next film in ryan's next film what is the number one thing that you think he should focus his attention on improving uh to take a film to a next level um you guys only get to share one each and i get to share multiple so deal with it uh just kidding so um Things that I loved, uh, I love that you're pushing yourself creatively. I'm assuming, I mean, I haven't seen any of your other work to my knowledge. Maybe I have. Um, I don't know if you've submitted before, but you are clearly like trying to push what a wedding film is. You're clearly trying to push yourself to see what you can do and, you know, flex your creative muscles. You built up all this hype, which I love. Um, you did it in a variety of ways, right? You had like all the speed ramping. You had the titles, which, you know, the title in the beginning I think was fine. I know it's like a cool, like, oh, I cut out the couple and I put them in front of the title and that looked cool. I actually really like the title that you used. I mean, font, whatever, I don't know. But like when you were using the uh, titles to like when you introduced uh, the bride and then you, and you switched her name, I think you also did one for the groom. This was at like the, I don't know, two or three minute mark, something like that. Um, it's just like something fun, interesting, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's the biggest thing for me of like, 
it really boils down to an umbrella of like building that hype up really well, trying new things, you know, you're speed ramping, you're using multiple frames in screen. I probably can't find one. You're using titles in a way that most wedding films don't. Um, so I, I really like that. And I think that's something you should lean into. Um, I will say, uh, before I get into things that I think you could uh, improve upon, is that does come with risks. And it's something that I've seen too, um, in more specifically in teasers. Like my teaser films, I want them to be upbeat and hype and out of the box and whatever, creative. Um, but I don't always get... I don't think my couples always share a love for that. Um, and so basically all that to say is like, it can be a dangerous game doing something like this. I don't know if this is your typical style, if you're known for that. Um, but uh, yeah, it can be dangerous because a couple might not, not want this. And it is kind of on them to see your work, right? But if this is like the only one you've ever done, just make sure. Um, I think actually um, somebody who does a great job of this is... Uh, Henry Martins, who we of course love here on the channel. He's an awesome guy, uh, obviously an amazing filmmaker, but I know on his site at one time, and maybe still, maybe not, it would ask like, which of the films on my site are you most drawn to and why, or something like that, because he would create such diverse, such a divor diverse catalog of films um, where, you know, one wasn't really like the other, but also some were very you know, out of the box creative edits and some were still amazing creative edits, but more, more in the box, I guess you'd say, I don't know. Um, so I think that's just an important note as far as like progressing your career. Um, and, you know, I think you should make what you want to make, but also you have to find the clients who want what you make or it'll be hard to make money. Um, so, okay. With that out of the way, things that I think you could improve on. Um, first off, and I think this is something that got mentioned in comments too, uh, is the frame rate thing. I I personally don't like the look. Uh, I think you shot in 60 and edited in 60. I don't like that look. Um, it's a personal opinion. Not everybody shares that, but to me it looks very home video-esque. Um, I think it can work in some ways, but having it uh, throughout the film um, is tough for me. So I, I think you can do that and you can lean into that and that can be your look and your style and there's nothing wrong with that. And I am not here to take away your look and your style. Just make sure that you're intentional about it and know why you're doing it because that look is gonna turn off a lot of people. And yes, wedding filmmakers, right? Us in the chat or in the group or whatever, are uh, gonna be able to put our fingers on that a lot more and say, hey, this is why I don't like it, or this is something that stands out to me or whatever. Couples might not be able to say, oh, well, you filmed at a high frame rate and I don't like the home video look. But even if they can't say it, there's a lot of, they could very easily still, still not be able to put a finger on what it is, but to say, there's something about this that I don't love. And it's a look that I think not a lot of people are, are pining over necessarily. So just give it some thought, I guess. Um, uh, I did see a lot of noise in your reception footage. So I would look at, I don't know if that stuff was underexposed and you had to bring it up a lot in post. I don't know if it's a limitation of your camera, if you could have brought lights to make it better, um, you know, a variety of things, or even cleaning it up with something like neat video. Um, or some other tool like that. Uh, just something to think about there. Um, then, let's see. One thing that I wanna talk about in a general sense is, oh, there he is again. Uh, in a general sense is like the overuse of effects. And one of them, in my opinion, is the speed ramping, which works really well for the style of film you're doing. But I think doing it for an entire, I mean, we only watch five and a half minutes, but very consistently throughout that can like take away from the value of that effect. So I would think about if you want to keep this hype feel throughout most of it, um, finding 
another effect to throw in there too or something else to try or do i think there were certain shots that it was used really well you had a very long speed ramp shot throughout the dance floor which i think was cool there are some speed ramps that lined up with the music really well that i think brought in you know some hype and some vibe to this film right and it's flashy and it's cool but overusing it i think is is something you know that is uh there's some risk there and then the other thing and this wasn't really overused 54 miles but this eight millimeter look and i don't want to talk about overusing it so much as the why behind it i think everything you know i've used effects simply because i want to and maybe that's my why and maybe that's good enough and maybe it's not i don't know i think about that often i'm sure we all do um, but you do want to be intentional. You want to be able to look at every shot that you put in your film or every effect or whatever and say, well, why? I think it looks fine, but I don't feel, I don't feel the why behind this. It just seemed thrown in to me. I think it's one thing, like I've used eight millimeter to, um, to, uh, like designate it between like some pre-wedding footage that I shot with a couple. Um, and I've used it sometimes where I'm like, I just need something to spice this up. But using it without intention, I don't, I just don't know. Like it would be one thing to use it with different shots, but it's just like, well, I think this might be her walking down the aisle. So that's, but like you used it a bunch of times with, I can't, there we go with the different bridesmaids. And it's like the same angle over and over. Uh, it's just a jump cut. And I don't like, this isn't a special shot to me. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just rambling, I guess I would say. But uh, yeah, something along those lines. Maybe somebody in comments can like flesh out what I'm trying to say a little bit better. Um, I think those are things that I would really focus on really being intentional with your frame rate. Um, being intentional with your uh, creative use of different effects and stuff like that. And then um, I think one more thing that I think you could really focus on that would help is kind of your depth in your shots, um, your framing, um, depth of field, um, your use of foreground, stuff like that. We have a lot of, oh, you had some depth of field there. So, but the majority of the first what I'm going to call the first film, which goes until the four minute mark is a lot of, a lot of wide. It's not quite four minutes it's like here or something, a lot of wide, not a lot of like, I, I, I would like to see more intentional framing from you, I guess is what I would say, because I think that you could get some really good shots to mix up um, what is just like a lot of wide, a lot of non depth, a lot of non use of foreground. And I think that could spice up your, film more i think that you know if i had to take a pick of like hey do you need to lean into um or like i think we as wedding filmmakers all are like called to one side or the other right are you a shooter or are you an editor you have you know uh, a dp or an editor or cinematographer or an editor i for one i very much prefer the shooting side i i i don't love editing i do sometimes usually it's just very frustrating for me etc cetera, etc cetera. um jared is the same way i think he's very much a uh you know a cinematographer uh jay might be more of an editor i can't really remember but all that to say is i think we we all even if we do both we lean towards one side or the other so i think there's i think it's very clear that you are pushing yourself really well in the edit and putting together something that's out of the box and creative and i would like to see you lean more into your capturing of the day being intentional with your shots and your framing and use some foreground and mix up, you know, the variety. I didn't have your gear list, so I, I don't know what you were using, but um, yeah, I think, I think that would be good. And then some of the other stuff that I mentioned as well. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Um, I had a couple other things written down, but I feel like that's, those are, I don't want to overwhelm you either. I think those are like the, uh, that's where I would start. Um, back to me as I drink water. 
All right, I'm gonna go through some comments here. Do, do, do. Uh, just gotta find where we left off. Are we still taking submissions? Hmm, I do have some extra time. All right, should we try something, guys? Right now, I block off until 2 p.m. I want to review somebody's film who is in chat right now. So go submit a film. If I don't choose yours, I will. Ch it will be in contention for next week still. Um, if you already submitted today while this live stream was going, you don't need to submit again for this, but if you, I will give you five minutes to go to the link, it's pinned at the top, weddingfilm.school, and then it's slash live review or something like that, but just click the link at the top, go through our submission form, fill it out. I'm gonna get an email from that. I will pick one more of somebody who is live in stream right now, and I will review your film. Um, so five minute countdown or so. Uh, so go ahead and do that right now. Uh, I'd love to get as many submissions as I can. We've got like 30 something viewers. Um, and also leave us a like while you're at it. Uh, but while I wait for you to do that, I will read through some of these comments. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm too high up here. Uh, great pacing and editing. Some of the higher frame per second shots have the shutter crank. That might be at two. I think that they're also editing in a higher frame rate. Um, but yeah, intro seems very long. Yeah, it's interesting. Like on one hand, um, I agree because it does feel like an intro, right? We switched over to this other film at like the four ish minute mark. Um, that was a little more of your traditional film and granted we didn't watch all the way to the end cause we only do about five minutes of each film. Um, but in a way that was like that intro wasn't an intro. It was also the film. Like that's what they were going for. Um, it's almost like a standalone film. It's a very interesting take. I wish Jay and Jared were here too. Cause I think there's so much to unpack in that film, but yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's like on one hand the intro was long, but it also like, wasn't really an intro. I don't think that was the intention. So it's hard to, uh, to do that. Uh, full time 60 frames per second from Sebastian. Uh, I, that's my guess for this wedding. I don't shoot everything in 60. Um, this is the first year that I've actually started shooting some stuff in 60. I don't really care for slow motion. Um, I'm trying to maybe use a little bit if I feel like it, I don't know, but that's where I'm at currently. I usually shoot everything in 4K 30. Um, I see a hair in the stream and it's driving me nuts. Uh, if I just look like this, nobody will tell. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I don't know. Um, we didn't get that info from him, unfortunately, but that's my guess. Uh, and yeah, I think Benjamin, you're talking back to that saying, seems like it, but we all do videos so we can all tell. Yeah, that's a, I mean, I think I pointed that out. I was like, look, we're going to be sticklers on it. But, but also it's important. Like I said, a bride and groom might not be able to say, oh, well, 60 frames per second. I don't want that. Um, and maybe they do want that, but, but they are probably able to say there's something about this that I don't love and I don't know what it is but it looks off to me if, if that's their opinion. So intentionality behind that I think is important. All right, I love this. Somebody hit me with the plus and the minus. So Benjamin Kelly, plus. Vows to each other sounded and looked good. Minus, I think that is. Seems like a really long intro. Find the best bits and use those. Gets boring because it's not dynamic enough. Seem to build up and then stagnate. I think I, I would, yeah, I mean, again, I don't know if that's supposed to be an intro so much, but even so, I think that goes back to kind of what I was saying about like, um, using things sparingly like it's okay to build up hype i love that it's okay to use eight millimeter effects and speed ramps or whatever but if it's four or five minutes of that you start to lose the effect of that and so there's like that diminishing returns thing um so i think that's important um but yeah i i like that thought uh, uh mike teves or tevez or whatever saying uh, i thought the intro could have been edited a little faster to be honest and a little shorter so we've got kind of a community uh community cause i'm making it a little bit shorter um and, but could have been edited faster yeah i i could see that i think uh you know certainly possible um 
Sebastian shooting at 25 frames per second must be not in the US, I'm assuming. I'm uh, just on dynamic moments. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Uh, I put 50 to 60 and use slow motion. Yeah, a lot of people do that. There's also a lot of people who shoot 60 the whole day. It's just personal preference. Uh, second wedding. Oh, wait. Neat video blows up my computer. Oh, okay. So as soon as I said it, I was like, man, I don't even know if I should recommend that. Uh, yes, it does blow up your computer. It ties up your computer forever. I think it works very, very well, like the end result. So that's good. But I seem to recall I've not used neat video in a long time because it stopped working after a final cut update. And it just, uh, it would like duplicate the frame over and over and over and over. And that's what it would ruin whatever clip I put it on. Um, I don't know if they switched that. I'm already just dealing with upgrading to the M1 MacBook and there's a bunch of issues there. In fact, this live stream barely happened because my typical audio, like des the way you can hear what's on my computer, uh, that program no longer worked. So I had to find something else and I was stressing, but we made it, we're here. Um, but yeah, neat video, great program if it works. Um, I, if any of you are using it with a current version of Final Cut, I'd love to know because I, I do really like that. I think it's a great tool. Um, but there's probably some other options also. Uh, Brandon, what's up? Brandon in the house. Uh, guys, you got like another minute until I check those emails. So submit now at the link on top and I will review one of your films who is in chat right now uh, uh, before, and I will check as soon as I get to the end of the comments. Um, those who don't know, Brandon and I go way back. I was the, I don't even know, maybe Brandon knows. I was a assistant camera or something like that. I don't know. On a, a short film of Brandon's for dvxuser.net. They used to run a quarterly competition. And uh, that was probably in 2008, 2009, something like that. So what is up, Brandon? Uh, Benjamin Kelly, did I get yours last week? I'm um, probably... Uh, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't look at all of them. We just kind of like, well, actually last week I didn't, I wasn't the one running the show. So Jay went through them. Um, I went through them this week. I'm sure we got it, but yeah. Uh, Brandon submitted one two days ago. Yes, I did see that again, guys, if we don't review yours today, um, if you submitted it today during this live stream, um, it will stay in you know I, i'll use the word queue it's not in order we just kind of choose randomly um but it will stay as an option for next week's live stream um if you did not submit today and we did not review your films so like brandon great example if you submitted two days ago um then resubmit it it's just easiest it kind of like stays in queue but it just like gets so backlogged so just like resubmit it for next week um because we'll, we'll try to like we want to mix up who we review like we want this to be useful to multiple people so um, I submitted one two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, saw that. Okay. Uh, what's your opinion on reusing music in films? My most recent couple fits a song I used in a film a couple years back, but really trying not to repeat music. I used to be the same way. Um, those of you in chat, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, because my opinion is just my opinion. But I don't really care anymore, honestly. I want to make a film. If I want to use a song, I mean, it's the same thing for using a popular song, right? We all use chapters, right? I'd love to use a song that's less known, but sometimes it just works, right? Sometimes I'm just like, man, I've dedicated a day to finding music and I just need to edit this. Um, or I just need to pass this off to my editor or whatever. Like, I, I just, I, I'm trying not to get so hung up on music. Yeah, I don't want to use it two, three weddings in a row, obviously, but like, especially if it's a few years back, oh, pff, 100%, uh, I would reuse music. Um, neat video is kind of hard to understand. Thank you all for the submissions. Uh, yeah, especially if it's not, if it's years back, use it. If it's not on your website, use it. Uh, Phil, uh, that probably would be okay, I assume. Royalty free YouTube library. Although I will say, I'd recommend, uh, well, personally, I would recommend Musicbed. I know a lot of people use that, use Musicbed. Um, we are affiliated with them. I used them literally since their inception, way before they were any type of sponsor. Um, I've also used Soundstripe. They're, they're solid too. It depends what kind of music you want and how many films you're doing. I think it's the big thing. And obviously how much money you have. Uh, is this show every Thursday? Yes, every Thursday now we are back. Uh, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon, Central, 10 a.m. Pacific. 
Maybe Phil can let us know what time it is in, uh, Phil, I can't remember where you are, like London or something. Uh, but yeah, uh, Vision Waves and try not to use the same, same song too close together, but I doubt couples would notice. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm like, you know, I got to live my life too, right? All right, I'm going into the streams. Actually, here's what we're going to do. Uh, wait, I got to go over here. So when was it submitted? So what day is today? June 30th. All right, 245. 254. All right. I have on here, in the last couple minutes, you guys submitted like 10 films to me. 245 through 254. Let's see if I can get this working. We're going to random number generate. Give me one second while I do a million things at once. Random number generator. I can spell. All right, minimum 245, maximum 254. One last check to make sure those are, wait, oh, wrong screen. One last check to make sure those are the numbers that we have. Oh gosh. That's from our running list of. Uh, Oh, somebody snuck in. 255. All right, we're capping it. 245 to 255. And I'm going to show you guys this so that you know I am not cheating. Oh, yeah. Also, we did have a giveaway last week. Uh, we were supposed to also give away another version of Film Convert this week. Um, but that's just too much for me to handle. So we will have more uh, versions of Film Convert or more licenses, which is an awesome program for film emulation. Um, kind of like a LUT almost to emulate film stock. And then also um, for uh, grain overlay. We love their grain. It looks so good. I think they also have a matching, like film match, cinema match. Is that, is that from them? Um, anyway, uh, here we go. Let's share my screen. Now we're going to go way over the time limit, but what are you going to do? 245 to two. 55 generating 253 gets it and that is that is brandon rice i'll show you right here just so you believe me 253 brandon rice all right let me bring this back over here because it's going to be a pain otherwise uh let me pull this up Brandon, I know that you license your music, so I'm not worried. That's the big thing that we're always worried about, guys. Like, if you're not licensing our music, then do we get a slap on the wrist and whatever? But uh, that's why we asked for that. But I, most of you guys are licensing your music and give us that uh, information. So thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So we are here at Brandon's. Guys, I am manning all arms of this uh, live stream here. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff you can see. And here we go. Now it's that. But let me read uh, what Brandon said. Um, actually, I'm really excited to review this one. Uh, Brandon, I did have yours pulled, and then we had a member. Because, guys, members do get priority. Um, sorry, uh, Ethan, not not in this random uh, spur of the moment uh, uh, pick of reviewing in live stream. But in general... Uh, so we'll probably review yours next week, Ethan, because we love reviewing your films. Um, but in general, members do get priority, so you can become a member down below. Hit the join button. Uh, we try to keep it pretty cheap for you. Um, but I, uh, I did have yours pulled aside because I did want to review it, and then we had a member submit kind of late. So, um, okay. Not lately, but uh, all right. Here's what Brandon wrote. They got a short film and a ceremony film. Most of the day was good. No prep. Ooh, interesting. Couple is very camera shy and did not really want a film. So uh, sound off in the comments if you've been there before because I know that that can be really stressful. Like if I know that's coming up, especially, man, I go into that day, I'm like so high stress. Because um, it's just, it's scary, right? And you're like, you're still holding yourself to the same standards. Here, you can see my beautiful face better. Uh, you're still holding yourself to those same standards, and that's what's scary, right? Like, Brandon, I'm sure you want to make the same film that 
not the same film, but the same level of film that's on your website that they like kind of expect. But if they're not willing to give the same amount that another couple is, um, that's really stressful. We also live stream their ceremony. Well, why don't you keep adding to the layers of stress? Cause, uh, that's up there too. So, uh, all right, here we go. Um, let's get this going. And this is uh, from Brandon Rice. And uh, Brandon, well, we might just watch the whole thing. We'll see if I remember. Typically now we're only watching five minutes. I know you're a little bit over it, but yeah. And... When I first heard about Lauren as Landon Smoke, I mean, very attractive teacher. And Quincy started talking about asking her now, and I highly encouraged her because you know, she was that good looking, I thought she'd probably say no. And there was a lot of school year left, so you'd have to still see her like every week, so I thought it'd be fun. But luckily for all of us, she said yes, and I mean, fast forward to today, here we are celebrating her love. Oh, and sun sits down over the hill where the lost got found. Reaching through somehow Oh, you're an island when the world's too loud We met Landon first because he was in preschool with me. He was in Lauren's preschool class. But when uh, Quincy met Lauren, I saw a spark in her eye I've never seen. And uh, then we met Quincy. And he was courteous. He was a gentleman. He was everything that a father would want. And I asked Lauren, or Lori did, she prized better than I do. Tell us about Quincy, tell us about Quincy. And she used one word, and she said, Quincy is chivalrous. And I thought, what word does a dad not want to hear more than that? Today and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends in the presence of God our Father. You establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May He send you help from heaven and protect you. May He grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. By the power of this sacrifice, O oh Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make one of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union, and replenish with the one bread and the one challenge through Christ our Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, now I present to you the newlywed couple, Quincy and Lori. You can look at each other. And now you may express your love for one another. Speed ramp.
Woo, 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 woo. Pro, whoa. You guys want to be a pro editor in three months? Thoughts? Anybody? Um, cool. All right. So I'm going to... Uh, I've got so many things. To... There we go. All right. Perfect. Uh, so awesome film, Brandon. Um, like I said, I know I was looking forward to uh, checking that out. So I'm glad that he won the lucky draw. And uh, But with that said, let's jump into... Uh, my thoughts on things that I loved and things that, um, you could improve. I know that you've been doing this a long time. So, you know, a, a lot of the improve, like when you get to a certain level, guys, I think just like a lot of the stuff where it's like, I think you could improve this, like take it with a grain of salt. It's just my thought. Right. And maybe you agree. Maybe you don't. So, um, and also for you guys in chat, I'd love to have you, uh, contribute as well. Things that you thought he did well, things that you thought he could change or improve upon. Um, so starting off with things that I thought you did well, you have a really good story. Um, you've always had these very like heartfelt films. Um, you're a very good, very good at weaving audio together. Um, you had great content to work with. Obviously that helps a lot. Uh, and that probably speaks to the types of couples that you attract, right? With the film that you put out there. Um, you bring in a lot of the couples who, uh, I mean, I've, I don't watch all your work, but I've seen this, not your first film that I've seen. So, um, that's always something that stood out to me and uh you seem to yeah attract couples that that have these heartfelt toasts which is important and and i think you know as well as i do that definitely makes your job easier so uh that's great um uh i think you had a really good use of music um there are certain like points in the film where you go to like big moments like everybody standing up in the bride walking in lined up with um you know kind of a uh crescendo or peak of a i don't know Jason's going to kill me for not knowing the right words. Uh, but yeah, um, I think you also do, and this is something that I've also seen throughout your work, not just this, but also in this film, you do a really good job of scene setting. Um, I know that's something that I, I just forget to shoot that stuff a lot. Like I'm so wrapped up in the moment. So I always like to give props to people who do a really good job of capturing where we are. And that is, you know, through your drone shots, but also other shots. Um, I'm going to go back here now. And I'm going to mute this. And like, oh, there we go. Um, like your first shot here is this great drone shot. And you have more of them later too. Uh, beautiful shot, that, that first drone shot. And then you also have a span in the middle where there's more scene setting. All this stuff here we're going to watch, which is another drone. You also end on a great drone shot, you know, this stuff. So really good job of just like setting the scene. And that stuff is really helpful. Like I'm sure, you know, I don't know. I think you always do a good job of it. I don't know if you like uh, went out of your way this wedding um, because you knew that they were maybe a little more camera shy or, or you were afraid you might not get as much content. But, you know, I don't think that this venue is like anything spectacular, right? But you just find a way to make the viewer feel like they're there. I don't remember if there is sound design in this stuff. You could have a little creek stuff or something like that if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, really good scene setting. Um, and the last thing that I think you do really well is, and, and I'm, you know, I've seen it in your other wedding films, but like, I don't always know the backstory, right? So knowing the backstory that like going into this, like, Hey, uh, they, they, they didn't really want to be on camera as much and they didn't want to do prep. And that's like a state, it's not a staple of every wedding film, but it's a, it's in pretty much all my wedding films. It's probably in a lot of yours too, you know? Um, so delivering, I, this is something I mentioned as like the worry going into it before we watched it, which is like, how do you deliver something that's quality and in line with your work and feels like your work when the couple, you know, takes things away from your process? Um, do you push back on that? Do you not? And that's its own separate discussion. And uh, I wonder if we've covered that on the podcast. I can't remember, but that might be a good topic if we haven't. Um, but more so to say, you have this consistent quality. This feels like a Brandon Rice film, even though you're missing those moments, even though the couple maybe was a little less inclined to give you the time that you typically have or, you know, whatever the issue is. So I think those are and I think in a lot of ways, that's the sign of somebody who's been in the industry a long time. Like that's, that's like a, um, you know, you, you move up through the ranks, right? And that's like a certain rank where it's like, you know what, pretty much no matter what I'm given, I'm going to create something. It might not be my favorite film and I might not be everybody in the wedding industry's favorite film, whatever, but it's going to be consistent with my brand. Um, so good job 
there. And uh, let's, I'm going to play this in the background while we go through other stuff. I'll see if I stop at certain points. I don't know. Um, now on to things that I think you could improve. Um, first of all, I'm just going to go in order, I think. There's a lot of noise. Uh, it's not in order. Never mind. Uh, there's a lot of noise in your speech. Oh, dang it. I missed it. In your speeches. Audio. Video. Um, video noise. Video noise. Um, now, tell me if I'm right, because I know you're in the comments. You had good lighting. I think you probably brought them. I guess I don't know that. On the dance floor for, like, the first dance for, I think, the dancing footage. I, I don't remember it as well for that. Um, I feel like you, they went maybe right, like they either surprised you with speeches starting or it was like a dance floor right into speeches, no downtime for you to move lights. That's the vibe I get because I think that you're usually conscious of that. Um, and, and it doesn't look like you had a light on them, I don't think. At least it wasn't very bright or it was far away if you did. Um, so yeah, I think that, you know, that's just something that sticks out to me and I'm sure it stuck out to you too. Um, neat video could help, but nothing will help like a, uh, like a light in the right place. So I feel like this kind of got sprung on you. That's kind of my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, anyway, uh, then the other thing people picked up in, in the stream is there's some, um, <laughs> no light and they did speeches where I asked them not to be. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know, like on one hand, bring a light, but if you bring a light and, uh, they don't go where you ask, like that's kind of its whole ordeal or a whole ordeal anyway. So I feel you, I've been there too. Um, it's probably annoying you as much as, or more than it annoys me. Um, uh, yeah. So there was some odd audio in that second speech from the, uh, father of the bride. You mentioned, uh, uh, a link that you were like, Hey, watch the with the, the good audio or something. I still heard that on my end. I don't think that was something on my end. I, I guess it's not impossible, but I heard it before it even got streamed to you guys. It sounds like, yeah, there's some like robotic background noise or something. So I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe you know, maybe you don't. Um, but it was only in that that dad speech, the second, the second set of audio. Um, all right, one other thing that I think is more like philosophical, right, is the shots that you choose to start with. And no, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, you shouldn't have started with a drone because I have no issue with that. I think this is a great scene setter. But I want to talk about the shots you picked here. So immediately after the drone shot, you go to these two shots of the couple. I'm a big fan of starting with shots of the couple. It doesn't have to be the very first shot. Like this totally falls in the realm of that. But I think you have much better shots of the couple later in the film and i would have started with those um this shot i don't love it's not bad it's totally fine it should should it make the cut totally but maybe not the first film or first shot you see of the couple i like this one a lot better than that one this is your second shot of the couple but i especially like later in the film let's see if i can find it quick like a bunch of these shots in the couple of the couple in my opinion are just better shots i don't know more emotion more whatever so uh i would have maybe swapped those out um but yeah uh and yeah i, I see your comment use it because them walking to the dock so i get that i don't know it's like so tough because it's like do you like is there like consistency in shots of telling that story or do you pick like your best ones i don't know i i deal with that too sometimes um uh and um, yeah, I think the only other things I would change, I felt like the transition to music was a little abrupt. I, I know like how you tried to cover it, but I think we could have, I'm sure you played around with fading them or something, um, just felt a little abrupt. And I would have maybe, I think, I don't know if you're looping the song at the end a bunch to get a bunch more like dancing footage. I also don't know if you have a certain minute or time or whatever that you have to hit. Um, so like, again, I always say this, like, you know, if you sold them a, six minute film and it needs to be six minutes or whatever. Like I get it. It's fine. Whatever. But I do think the dancing footage went on a little bit long. And especially if you were looping that audio just to get more dancing footage in, I would have probably cut some of that dancing footage out and then switched to that kind of closing sequence uh, that was at the end with like the drone shot and the shot of them and whatever. Um, also, I'm very curious. Is this a photo booth? What you're seeing right now, is this a photo booth 
literally just straight up on the middle of the dance floor? I need to know in the comments. Uh, other than that, though, man, awesome job. I assume that we'd get a great film out of you, so... Uh, He's saying, yes, 100%. Yes, it is. Middle of the dance floor. Uh, so there it is, guys. Once again, I like, whoo, man, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I could do that. I would question that. I would, like, I'm not going to, like, pick it up and move it, right, as the videographer at the wedding because that's going to get you in trouble. But, like, uh, wow, that's just the worst place for that. Um, yeah, so thanks for submitting. So everybody that submitted since the, the stream started, um, your your videos will uh, you know kind of remain as a possibility, I guess you would say, for us to review next week. So make sure you're here next week. It's every Thursday now, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Central, 10 a.m. Pacific, and translate as you see fit. Um, but if you did not submit during this film or 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 sorry, during the stream or once it started, um, hit that link in the top of the uh, chat, wherever that is. I don't know which direction it is. Uh, hit that and submit a film for us to review. We'd love that. And if you want priority in getting your films reviewed, you can become a member. Uh, right now, that's what we do. We might revamp our membership program. I don't know. But at least right now, that gives you priority in getting your films reviewed. Um, let me go through comments real quick because I haven't in a little while. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other questions as we kind of begin to ramp down on the stream here. Um, we've been going about two hours, so uh, just kind of that right time. That's what we want to shoot for usually, about two hours, three or four films. So um, Benjamin Kelly told speech givers to stand at the mic stand this weekend. She went up and stood by the bride and groom. I went up and told her I actually need you to stand over there at the mic stand, and it worked out. Yeah, I uh, man, that's so tough Like when you have those scenarios where you're like, should I impose myself because i know it will make the experience way 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 better or like i sometimes have that with like a microphone where it's like on a stand and they stand up there and that like the person that went before them is like you know five feet zero and then they're like six five and they don't adjust it at all and i'm like i'll like crawl up right like army crawl up and then i'm like flip over on my back and like adjust it from down below and bring it up closer to them or something obviously not that extreme that would be kind of its own uh spectacle so uh but i do sometimes go up there and but i struggle with it where i'm like man i don't know like should i do this uh so yeah um brain feels like chron chronology is always important but you're right love the critique yeah i i mean again it's an opinion thing right like what i said kind of starting out early like once you're, you're you've been making films for a long time and at that point it's kind of a lot of opinion based things but um i do think you get a limited amount of time for a potential couple like your couple's going to watch the whole thing all their family's going to their friends whatever but first you know if it goes on your website or whatever if it's used to bring in uh potential couples especially so you know if it's not going to be marketed then maybe it's not as big of a deal but um for them especially like you have a certain amount of time to like show off your best stuff so um Tell the DJ to announce it too like the videographer wants to make sure you stand at the microphone stand in the light even if you go over it with them. Yeah, going over it with them is big. Uh, that usually, that cuts out a majority of the problems. But yeah, um, having a DJ, sometimes the DJ will announce from the mic stand and then wait for them to come up. And then, uh, you know, he'll whisper something to them, which I imagine is along the lines of like, hey, just make sure that you're speaking nice and close to the mic. Leave the mic in the stand, etc. So that's always helpful. Good DJs make our lives much easier. Uh, teaser shots of the couple are cool to use in the beginning where you see parts of them like hands, feet, chest, but without seeing their eyes. Yeah, that's another way to approach it too, for sure. Like teasing the couple. But the main thing, I think the like I was saying earlier, the main point of that is to get your, your, what are your best shots? Like your best five, 10 shots might not all fit and flow and have a place in the first 30 seconds of a film, but you definitely want some of them in there for sure. Uh... Whoa, Phil hitting us with the submission. Well, that will be in the running for uh, next week. Uh, thanks for submitting. And uh, I don't I don't know if I'm picking the films next week, but we'll see. Uh, TWHD, hello. Could you review my film, please? You can submit it. Uh, we are out of, out of time for today. We're not doing any more submissions. We're just hanging for a minute here. Um, but we will, uh, we are here every single week, every single Thursday. 
at this time, which is 12 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, so submit it at the link in the top of the chat. It's the pinned comment. It's weddingfilm.school slash something. And uh, submit it there and fill out all the stuff that we need for that. And uh, you will have a shot at getting reviewed for uh, next week. Um, I had to adjust and cut the guy after he said who he was. Got to make sure the couple gets a good film. Yeah, that's that balance, right? Like, I don't know. Do I want to interrupt the day? Do I want to make sure that I'm doing my job? I don't know. All in all, they probably don't even remember that that happened. So, uh, A lot of send links in chat. Nope. Yeah, so, okay. Looks like you got it. Yeah, so use that link. Uh, I mean, you, I don't know. You can send the link. It might actually uh, uh, hide it as spam or something. I don't know what our settings are. But, yeah, you want to use that link. That's how we uh, kind of aggregate everything. Um, other than that, guys, thank you so much for everybody who is here today. Um, like I said, actually, it wasn't a very rocky road, but, uh, you know, I was running everything here. So uh, I would love to have you guys like this video. That's super helpful for us. Um, leave a comment on our stuff. Like, if you're liking these live streams, I love having you guys in chat, but I'd love to see you guys showing up as well in the other videos that we drop. Uh, just leave us a comment. Say, hey, what's up? Let us know you watched it. Um, and that helps out the channel, right? So, uh that's how we keep making you guys free content, and uh, we appreciate it. So, um, and otherwise, we will see you guys next week at the same time. We'll have a whole new array of wedding films. Maybe, let me know if you guys like when we do the live drawing. Uh, that could be something we work in. Although, when it's, you know, me and Jared and Jay, there's more comments probably going on. So, we probably go a little bit longer. So, we were just ahead of the game today. Um, but thank you guys so much. Um, Super happy to hang out with y'all, review some films. We got through four films today, four awesome films. I hope everybody who submitted found it helpful. Thank you to everybody who is in chat also sharing their thoughts and opinions. That means the world, and that is what we want to see here as we build up this community. And, uh, you know, for those who didn't get their film reviewed, keep submitting, because um, we do want to try to get to everybody as we can. And we're excited to see you guys next week right here on the Wedding Film School YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Wedding Film School Live.